Hi guys, Squirrel here, and welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. In this video, uh, we're going to cover quite a few things, actually. Um, I'm sure this video will raise more questions than answers, but I want to show you a few things. A little bit of flight planning, a little bit of how to program the TBN with, uh, with your own routes, rather than have Microsoft Flight Simulator load it all for you, and also FS Economy. <laughs> What's FS Economy? FS Economy is basically something that it's a website and it connects uh it basically runs on you run it on the website you have an account and you start off with no money and you basically fly planes to earn money so what you do is you have this uh, fs economy client here it connects into your sim and relays information between the sim and the back-end servers at fs economy the upshot of all that is that um, basically you can fly planes around, which adds a bit more purpose into your flying. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of FS Economy at this stage uh, because, you know, it is a little bit involved. Feel free to go and sign up. It's completely free. There's nothing to pay. Um, but, you know, once you've got signed up, you'll have no money. You'll then have to go around, find some, find some airfields like we're at SAF at the moment. Uh, so if I went to... Uh, Kilo Sierra Alpha Foxtrot, which is the airfield we're currently at. FS Economy is a bit slow at the moment because it's quite popular, so we'll just give that a little bit of time to load. Um, if you was to go to Santa Fe Municipal, which is where we are right now, you can see there's a whole bunch of cargo that needs to be flown and passengers. So, for example, these passengers want to go to KFCS, they want to go to Quebec, and it tells you here how much they're willing to pay. So the nautical mile distance, so these guys will pay... Uh, $918 to be flown 200 miles and it's roughly in a direction of one niner on the compass down the bottom here are some of the aircraft that are at this airfield and some of them are not available to rent some of them are you can rent these dry or wet the difference being whether you pay for fuel yourself or you pay for the wet you know fuel included price this is my aircraft here 264 Sierra Quebec you can see it's locked because I've basically rented it I've rented it from my own group. Um, we have a few planes in our group here, and they're all in Sierra Quebec. And you can see they're all scattered around. This is their home location. This is their current location. Um, like I say, I won't get into the details of FS Economy. If this is something you want me to cover in future videos, how to kind of get set up and get going, I can do that. But let me know in the comments section. But for, for now, I just want to basically show you a flight involving FS Economy. So. I've grabbed a bunch of passengers, um, well, I've grabbed assignments, and you can see three of them are here in Santa Fe, and four of them are down at St. John's. Uh, and the reason I've grabbed all of them is because I'm going to fly all of them to Phoenix, ultimately. They all want to go to Phoenix, uh, but some want to take off out of Municipal and some want to go to St. John's. So I'm going to fly from here to St. John's with these three passengers, and then I'm going to pick up the extra four, and then I'm going to head off to Phoenix. And in this video, we're going to just look at this part of the flight from uh, Santa Fe down to St. John's Municipal. So we'll have these guys on board, these three. Now, when we actually start FS Economy, the, the program, it's, it basically works. You start the flight and it looks for parking brake on and off is what it's looking for. Um, if you are at the source airfield with the brakes on, you start it, you get to the destination and you put the brakes back on again it will then track that work out the distance that you've flown work out your fuel burn uh, and then you know log it accordingly you can't accelerate time when you're flying because if you do it will detect that you've got the in an unreasonable amount of time and it'll just invalidate the flight basically so there's no there's no cheating in that sense you can't just slew over to the airfield and go hey you know it doesn't work like that Anyway, when we start up FS Economy and, and, and turn it on, it will connect to uh, Microsoft Flight Sim, and you'll see it will change the tail number here. It will change the fuel on board, and it will change the passenger loadout. Uh, all of that will then be applied to this plane. So the next thing we need to do is basically work out a route. So I'm going to show you how to use Navigraph just to plot a route out. You could use Simbrief, but I'm just going to show you Navigraph, and then we'll go through programming the TBM. Uh, if you don't want to sort of go through some of these details that's fine just skip forward the youtube will have a timeline you can just jump forward to departure if you want to or arrival whatever floats your boat but if you want to learn a bit more um stick around right so let's grab 
Navigraph charts and we shall create a new flight manual input. We shall go from KSAF to KSJN, St. John's Industrial. There you go. And we'll tell it to auto -gener generate the route using high airways. It'll pick something and then we'll kind of figure out the details in a minute. So here we go. This has basically brought in, let me just make this a bit wider because um, it will start popping in sidebars in a second. So the first thing we need to kind of figure out is our departure out of um, Santa Fe. I've had a look at live weather. We're running live weather, live time and everything. Uh, they're currently departing out of zero two. So if we choose runway zero two from the departure list, and then we look on here at the actual departures, the one we want is the Zayas 4, because there's actually a there's a waypoint down here. There's Albuquerque. That will come in in a second. There you are. Zayas uh, is here. So what we want to do is we want to depart out of Zayas on the Albuquerque transition. And what you can do to help with this is click on the show visuals, and it'll say, obviously, the uh, the Poke 2, Poake 2, is going northbound. Tafoy is for eastbound traffic, and Zayas is for westbound and you can see this kind of leg here. This is the Albuquerque transition. So which takes us roughly in the direction we want to go to come into 3-2. If they were using the other airfield down at St. John's, we'd probably go for this one, come in from that side. Um, but I looked at the weather, and that's what they're doing. So we'll go for the Albuquerque transition. Uh, as you can see, that's now added that. And unfortunately, what it's done is it's left Santa Fe Waypoint here, SAF. It's left that on the... That's now redundant, so we'll just click on that and delete it. And that should give us, uh, there you go, that should give us a, a decent departure out of runway 02, left turn, climb, up to Zayas, down to uh, Albuquerque, and then we're basically on our way. So that's the departure sorted out. Next thing is the arrival. Now, the arrival into St. John's is a little bit interesting. Um, they don't have standard arrivals as such. There's no star procedures for this, so a lot of it involves the St. John's VOR and a bit of vectoring shenanigans and using RNAV approaches, which are kind of GPS approaches. So what we'll do is we'll click on approaches here and we'll start to look around. So we've got runway 32 is the one we're looking for. That's the active runway. Uh, we've got a direct and we've got an RNAV. So let's go with the RNAV. And now it gives us a few options for transitions. So once again, we'll click on this just to give us some clues as to uh, which one is the best one to pick. I need to change that to 32. There we go. Uh, and you can see we've got the kind of this green R now for 3 2. The, the VOR station is here. So, which one do we want to pick? Well, 3 2 with the St. John's VOR is possibly a decent bet. You can see it's got a holding leg here. But what we can do is come out of St. John's and then basically turn onto, onto final. There'll be some step down points here for the RNF. So, we'll add that to our route. Uh, do you want to insert? SAF insert after Albuquerque or after Cabno. Sorry, Cabno was, was back here. So we'll add that. Uh, oh, what's it done? You silly thing. I don't know why it's done that. Hang on. We've got direct to Albuquerque, down to Cabno, then to SAF. I don't know where that came from. And, okay, that, that's better. So there's, there's Cabno here. So Cabno, and then it takes to St. John's here. And then we've got to vector ourselves in. Great. So if we click on St. John's and open the chart list and then go to RNAV for runway through two, we can actually overlay this onto the chart, which is quite handy because we can basically see um, as we come out of St. John's um, VOR here, we basically have these GPS waypoints that have step down, um, step down climb um, altitudes. So 9,500 is where we need to be when we're at Gov, and then we're at Hox 8,000, and then this is our kind of final approach fix, is at Kovov, this one here, and at that point we're basically down into uh, the airfield. So what we can do is we can start off by, at the at the top here, we can we can um, go into TBM, and we can pick Zayas, and uh, then we can go to Albuquerque. Z Zayas 4 should take us to Albuquerque, then we can go direct to Cabno, and then hopefully it'll let us pick um, runway 32 RNAV. If it doesn't, then we may have to start programming in the waypoints ourselves. So I'm just going to put this off to one side here. Let me get rid of that. And uh, I'm not going to start the aircraft up uh, 
manually. I'm just going to control E the whole thing because frankly, I can show that in a different video. and We've already got a lot to cover. So we'll let the aircraft start up and then we'll get things programmed in. Aural warning, okay. Okay, aircraft is started up. So first thing I'm going to do is adjust this. The field elevation is 6349. So we'll adjust the barrel to 6350. That'll do. That's given us the correct barrel reading. Um, that should not be on VOR1. That should be on FMS. So it's on GPS stuff. And then we'll pop over here. And this is where the fun begins. Because on di I've noticed on different aircraft. Uh, th this is a Garmin 3000 system. Different aircraft has different uh, implementations in Microsoft Flight Simulator. As to how much stuff is actually allowable. Anyway, we'll see how we get on. So the MFD. And then we go to Flight Plan. And then we're going to add the Origin. Which is KSAF. Enter at the destination, which is KSJN November. There you go. So it's got that punched in already. It says 174 nautical miles, 240 degrees bearing. And then what we want to do is go to procedures and then departure. And then we want the Zayas 4 with the Albuquerque transition. We'll load that. And that should give us a slightly different look for our departure. There we go. Beautiful. So, yeah, as you can see, we're going to take off with a climbing left turn. And that will take us to the IAS, then out to Albuquerque, and then we're on our way. Now, the question is, can we actually put in an arrival? Uh, it looks like none of that is implemented. So there's no arrival. Maybe that's because it wants um, stars. So then we'll try the approach instead. Approach, transition, great stuff. So none of that works. <laughs> um, all right, so plan B is we'll basically punch this stuff in manually and uh, see how we get on. Um, so there's Albuquerque. So the next waypoint, if you remember, was, uh, was it called? Cav, Cav off or something. Cabno. Right, so we'll put Cabno in. So we'll add en route waypoint, uh, cab, no, like that, uh, cab no is here, we need to figure out, um, we need to figure out our ele um, altitude that we want to be at, let me just see if we can, okay, it's got cab no in, which is correct, so that's good, so we're almost on track here, so we've got cab no, and then after that, we've got, um, the arrival plate, so let's open up the charts, open up R32, and what I'll do now is I'll put in St. John's as the next waypoint, and then we'll put Gov, and then probably Kovov, and Hugov, and then we'll put these altitudes in, and we'll backtrack and try and work out our V-path back down again. So we're just basically doing it manually, uh, so let's see, we've got Cabno, and then we want uh, St. John's, which is S, J, N. And just keeping an eye whether these things look reasonable. Those those headings look reasonable because we should be coming in on a westerly heading approximately. Um, so these all look normal and the distances are fine. If you suddenly see it jumps like 1,600 nautical miles, get worried. At an en route waypoint, so we've got um, G, U, V, C, E. Enter. So again, that's a small, small jump. Now we do know that at Gov we need to be at 9,400 feet elevation. And it looks like it's backtracked and worked out 6840 on that, which definitely isn't right. Definitely is not right. Um, we should decide actually what our cruise altitude is going to be. Uh, given this kind of distance, we're at 6,000 elevation approximately. So we could perhaps go um, 16,000, let's say, as our cruise. So let's say if we want to get down to about 10 here, that at St. John's we most certainly want to be, this is, this is only seven nautical in between, so at St. John's we want to most certainly be 12,000 or so, and therefore back at Cabno maybe like 14,000. All very uh, non-precise. <laughs> But we can adjust on the way, it's fine. 
So then we've got, um, after Gov, we've got, um, let's see, Hox OK. So we've got uh, H O X O K. And that would be at 8,500. I'm just looking over at the chart, by the way. You've already seen the charts. And then we've got Cov of. Cov of is 7,700. And then, let's see, so that's, I'm just getting it from here, so 8,500, 7,700, and then hug off 6,480, and that'll be the last waypoint that we need. Um, hug off. So we shouldn't need to do all this, it should be, um, it, we should be able to select all this from the Arnav approach, you should just punch it all in. But for whatever reason, it's not working on the TBM, it's definitely working on other aircraft though, bizarrely enough. Unless I'm just doing something wrong. So then you've got, yeah, hug off 6840. Um, and that is pretty much... I can't zoom out anymore, unfortunately. That is pretty much the whole thing set up. Um, you can see that we're going to take off out of 02, so we're going to have to taxi all the way we can get in there, probably, and get out. I don't know. We'll have to taxi to the end here and turn. We'll just have to see how it goes. So I shall... We're going to increase that to 16,000. Elevation of this airfield is so high. Outside air temperature, 42 Celsius. Ouch. That poor guy. It's 42, look at it. There's a few things I want to set up here before we leave. So PFD settings will have... The bearing, which gives us our next, the distance to our next waypoint, and then the other wind, option three on the wind, gives us our current wind. Oh, that's swung around, that's interesting. A very small amount of wind. And, um, yeah, that should do us, I think. So, that's all set up. Um, we've got to get our... And I shall separate stuff to come on. We don't need these, but if you don't put it on, it, it cries about it. We'll get some nice cool air blowing inside the cockpit because this thing is air conditioned. Pretty certain it should have put that bleed onto auto when it auto started. Um, yeah, so everything else is set. We're going to be in nav mode. We're probably going to be in V speed mode initially. The flight director is going to come on. Your damper stays off when you're on the ground. So I'll go and taxi down, and we'll pick it up as we're about to enter the airfield. Or the runway, I should say. Before I taxi, there's one thing I need to let you know. When you start playing FS Economy, the one thing that you will do is you will forget to start FS Economy before you take off. And I almost did the same thing. So let's, let's not do that. Let's bring in FS Economy, go to Action Start Flight, and by the way, these should be connected. That's your SIM connection, and that's the back-end server connection. So just give it a little bit of time, because FS Economy servers are getting hammered right now. Ever since Microsoft Flight Simulator came out, this thing's taking ages. So it says it's not responding. It's probably waiting for a connection from the back-end, but I don't want to move until it's done. There you go. So now we're connected. Now you can see it's picked up the three passengers. Uh, the clock is ticking. We're literally it's costing us money in the server now. And if we jump down here, you will see that the fuel has been adjusted to what is actually the onboard fuel on the plane in FS Economy. And finally, it's changed the tail number to November 264 Sierra Quebec. So that's what it's done. It's loaded the passengers, loaded the fuel, changed the tail number, and it's now tracking the flight. So once again, I will go and taxi and I'll see you at the runway. Right, here we are holding short of 02 at Charlie. Uh, just a few things we need to do before takeoff. Uh, we need to set our heading bug so that it's roughly at runway heading 02 just in case we have a problem of any description. It's always good to have the heading bug point in the direction you're going. We need to put the tax light off. Now strobes and everything else can come on. We'll just turn the panel brightness down. We don't need it quite so high today. Uh, let's see. Altitude is set. Flaps we need to put on to take off. There's our flaps here, by the way. Flaps into takeoff. Uh, trim set for takeoff. Everything else looks good. So 
Let's put the uh, track IR on. Approach is completely clear. So, rotate at uh, 80 knots, climb out about 10 degrees of climb. Gear will come up as soon as we're uh, off the ground and climbing. Flaps will come up at about 6,800 feet, something like that. And then we'll get a left turn climb out. And then we'll engage the autopilot. And it will start doing that departure for us. Big long runway. Bring some power in with the brakes on. Everything's settled down. And then gradually bring it up to take off power. There we go. Okay, power is set now. Air speed's building up. There's 80 knots. Climb, gear's coming up. Trying to hold runway head in and trim. There we go. Just about trim for 10 degree climb. So we're going to have to do a left climb now. Flaps are coming up. Okay, the nose pitched down there, so we'll just bank it around. We're going to ease off on the on the power now. This thing performs pretty well, particularly when you've only got two extra passengers on board. So if we look down here and just get zoomed out a little bit. to get back onto that instrument departure. Okay, so I'm going to put autopilot on. I'm going to put half bank mode on, which means it doesn't uh, aggressively turn as much as it otherwise would do. It only uses half of its bank angle that it can do. And then we'll put V-speed mode on and we'll tell it to... Uh, Climb up. Bring a bit more power in. And 1400 feet per minute is more than comfortable for this thing. And it's not following the nav because I didn't engage autopilot apparently. It's interesting. Really sure what happened there, but clearly I messed up. Let me just turn it around. Maybe I pressed the wrong button. I should have put the yaw damper in anyway. I didn't do that. Let's just pitch the nose down slightly. Okay. Once a it's still not having it. Interesting. Right, let me turn the heading bug over. It looks like I'm going to be flying this manually. <laughs> I'm not really sure why the AP's not coming in. Let's turn the landing lights off while we think. And the inertia separator can come off now. So your damper's on. Flight director is definitely on. Page autopilot, not having it. So boost pumps off, missions on. Ah! Did it not put that on? There you go. Interesting! So control E. Control E completely messed up there, didn't it? 
get it back into heading mode and uh, we'll just navigate our way out of this. That's a couple of things it didn't do, actually. It didn't actually put the autopilot into on, which meant I couldn't engage the autopilot. Should be climbing now. There you go. V speed 1400, seeking the altitude it wants, and let's see if we can put it to nav mode. Hopefully, it'll pick up the nav. So, it wasn't something I did wrong particularly, it's something that the auto start didn't do, which is very curious. Anyway, we are en route. Uh, if we have a look at the departure, you can see we're going to be we're almost to 16,000, which is our cruise altitude on them pull back on the throttle, we're climbing quite aggressively right now. So we're already 10,000 feet above um, above ground level, approximately. But still inside America's transition airspace, so we don't need to go to standard pressure at this point. But the pressure does change. If I press the B key, you notice the altitude does jump to 981 um, because the live weather, it does change as you fly from sector to sector, which is quite cool, because that's how it should be. Right, we've got this thing under control, so what I'll do is uh, we'll pick this up in the descent and see what the arrival like is like into St. John's. Welcome back. We are coming up to Cabno. If you look, our ETE is just over four minutes. So I'm going to start a vertical descent of about 500 feet per minute. And that should bring us down to Cabno. Let's back off from the throttle slightly because if you remember, we wanted to be at Cabno, we wanted to be 14,000 feet. And we're currently at 16, but we're now descending. Uh, the scenery was not exactly spectacular, like, <laughs> it really is just a whole lot of nothing around here, although there was a, a, a big kind of city back there with a, a river, I noticed, I don't know which what it was, but there's so much land here, it's just crazy how much land there is. So when we get through uh, Cabno, we are going to be carry on descending at 500 feet per minute. We're going to go straight down to uh, SJN. We need to be 12,000 at SJN so we can pick up. Um, this is the important one, Gov. Gov at 9,400. That's the important one. So we'll just keep our descent going, probably. So we can bring that down to uh, 12 already. But at this rate, we should. Um, we, we're pretty much on profile. Although it doesn't really give us a profile because we don't have proper VNAV punched in, so there's no kind of profile to follow. If I was able to select RNAV 3.2, it would. Oh, but a turbulence. If I was able to select an RNAV uh, for 3.2, we'd probably have a decent profile set up. But I've had to just basically work one out, and it's very, very imprecise. But an RNAV approach is a non precision approach anyway, so it's, you know, it's no biggie. Synchronize that heading bug. So yes, I shall continue descent and we'll pick it up a little bit closer. Okay, we are coming up on SJN. 
exactly where we wanted to be. I changed SGN to 11,000 because I figured that uh, it was quite a jump down to Gov if it was 12,000. So we adjusted it down to 11. And you can see we're about to approach SGN. So I'm going to put the uh, landing lights and stuff on now. And I've slowed down a little bit, brought it down to 200 knots because we're going to have to descend quickly here and slow down. So we want to be at 9,400. Is our target altitude next? So there we go, there's the turn at SGN. And we'll go V speed and we'll bring it down. What's our ETE? Two minutes, okay. We need to shave about 2,000 off, so we'll go to about 700 feet a minute. Just need to keep control of the speed now. Uh, I'm going to turn off half bank because when it gets to Gov, it's going to have to make quite a sharp right turn, and I don't want it to do like a half bank turn and then be way off profile. And in terms of the vertical step down, we're going to have to manage our profile down here. Um, we're going to go for like 500 feet per minute and see what happens. Um, we've got various checkpoints on the way. We've got like um, Cov at 7,700. That kind of thing. So as long as we're roughly on profile, we'll get a visual on the runway, and we should be good. Okay, looks like we're going to be hitting and gov on the profile, which is great. 200 knots, so when we start lining up, when we get to gov, we'll be 11.8 nautical out at that point. So that's where we need to start thinking about bringing our speed back. Uh, probably go gear down round about Cov, not Gov. Cov will go gear down, I think. That'll put us. Actually, no, we need to do it before then. Probably a bit Hox, actually. Hox is 8.6 nautical away. If you just want to quickly refresh on the chart there. Uh, Gov is 11.8. Hox is 8.6. Cov is 6 nautical miles out. At this point, we're on basically final. Okay, so here's the turn. I'm just going to back off now. The throttle. And we'll continue our descent down to 7,700, which was Cov. We're slightly above the profile we wanted, but once we slow down, we should be able to get it back. The main thing is we've got our LNAV track. Right, so there's Hawks. Uh, Hawks should be at 8,500 feet. I, feel like, I always feel like in this sim, I'm like a 10 year old looking over, you know, the dash of my dad's car or something. Can never quite get this height thing exactly where I want it. I know you can press the space key and do that, but then it just feels a bit weird. Okay, so there's Hawks, and we're above profile, I think. So Hawks should be 8,500, so yeah, we're a little bit above where we want to be. So I'll probably get the gear down now, that, that way that'll give us some drag. You can see the runway in sight now, so it's just a matter of managing the descent. Cover off, we want to be at 7,700. Bring the speed right back. Three green. Uh, inertial separators coming on. I want to get back into uh, flap speed now, really. It's a slippery bird, this one. But yeah, I'm trying to descend so quickly that uh, I need to get it into flaps, really, but until that white bar comes up, I can't deploy the flaps. Okay, we're okay. We should be 7,700 cov or 7,900. It's fine. Once we get the flaps down, we'll be good. Yes, we know the inertia separator's on. Okay, flaps are coming down.
cause a lot of drag, which is exactly what we want right now. There we go. That's better. How go if we want to be 6,400? Don't think that's going to be a problem. set up slightly slightly higher there we go all right so pretty soon we're going to be cancelling autopilot and your damper and going in for a manual land all lights are good up here only lights on nothing else is on Good. Flaps are set. Gear is down. And our reference landing speed is about 85 knots. So we're going to be making a left turn out into the taxiway. I should have I should have checked the um, that port shot. Right. Hug over 6.4. That's not bad. Pretty much bang on profile. Right. Autopilot. Your damper's off. Let's get a little bit of altitude. That's uh, looking decent. Happy with that. Looking out the window, the terrain doesn't look exactly amazing, does it? <laughs> I mean, it looks alright, but... Seems to be landing over a lot of houses, that's for sure. building just like your wing is so close to that building what the heck and we are down lovely Okay, transient parking is right here. That's amazing. That's quite convenient. Okay, let's see. So we want... Nav strobes, haul off. guy expecting us? I think he might be. Not exactly sure where he wants us to... Okay, right turn. It's a problem with these um, turbo props is when you lose speed you gotta... There we go. Okay, parking brake is on, and the first thing that happens when you do parking brake is you get this pop-up from uh, FS Economy saying it's connecting and sending some results to the server, we'll just give that a second. Uh, so we're going to shut down this thing, let's turn off the flight director. Put that into feather. Static heat can come off. 
Let's help Paul and come off. And the crash bar goes down. Jobs are good. Un. Right. So, let me just quickly show you. Let's get back here. And we'll show you what happened. So, it says send results to the website. That's done. If we now go and look at a squirrel, if you refresh this, give it a second, it should show some different information. These passengers will now be... There you go. So they these passengers that we had... Oh, hello. Oh, no. From SAF. Location SGN. I don't quite understand what that says, SAF. Uh, so, yeah, these guys are all at SGN, which is where we are now. And uh, they all want to go to PHX. So when I take off again, I'll have to uh, check my fuel, which you notice has gone down to just 18%. 52 gallons. There's a thing at the bottom here where if you know your distance, for example, 146 miles from SJN to Phoenix, uh, if I put in 146 and say calculate, it estimates I'll need 28 gallons of fuel, and I've got 52. So that, that doesn't sound like it's got a lot of fuel, but this thing has a huge range on it. So um, it should be absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, it says they're departing, so they're just waiting for me to book out the next flight. Um, but that is it for this video, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed the flight today. And uh, FS Economy, let me know what you think about it, if you want any instructional stuff on it. Until the next one, take care, guys. Happy flying.